Hi everyone, I'm Jen Lucas, Managing Editor of The Knitting Circle, and I wanna welcome you to today's live event. And I also wanna say happy National Craft Month. If you didn't know, March is National Craft Month. And so this month at The Knitting Circle, as well as on some of our sister sites, you are gonna be seeing all sorts of crafting happening. And we're gonna be doing things like maybe challenging ourselves a little bit, learning some new uh, skills. So it's gonna be really fun. So be sure to stay tuned for all of that fun this month. Um, and with that said, today's project is one that I really uh, designed with National Craft Month in mind. And that is this Intarja color block um, dishcloth. And so, Intarsia is one of those knitting skills that not a lot of people um, tend to do. A lot of people shy away from it and a lot of people love it too, but a lot of people do tend to sh shy away from this um, because it can be a little bit fiddly in that you have to deal with these different little balls of yarn, which I am of course gonna show you uh, in the demonstration. Um, but for me, I wanted to challenge myself this month as well. And so um, I have done Intarsia before. Um, I have not done it very often. Um, over the last 20 plus years that I've been knitting. I can only think of two specific times that I have done it. Um, I might have done it one or two more times beyond that. Um, but I've never designed anything. Um, I've never written up a pattern um, for intarsia. So that was my challenge for myself was I was going to design something in intarsia. And I did choose a dishcloth because I felt like it was a pretty low commitment for all of us involved, uh, for me as the designer um, and as you uh, as the knitter, um, just because, you know, when you're learning a new technique or you're working on a technique that you maybe haven't done a lot before, um, it's nice sometimes just to do these small projects and give it a try. And if you like it, great, you can try a different project. Um, and if you don't like it, well, you didn't spend that much time working on it. Now you know you don't like it. So, um, but I encourage everybody to try uh, this dishcloth because it really is pretty easy. We don't have to worry too much about gauge. It's a very small project, etc. So before I get started, I just want to remind everybody that you can download the pattern um, so that you can follow along and then knit one for yourself later. The pattern is linked in the description and we also have a QR code on the screen where if you just take a photo of that uh, QR code with your um, you know, phone camera, um, it will take you right to where you can download the pattern. So go ahead and grab that pattern and then we'll go ahead and get started. So first I'm of course gonna talk about the materials we're gonna need. Um, and so, of course, we're going to start because it's a dishcloth. We're going to start with some worsted weight uh, dishcloth cotton. So for this particular project, we don't need a lot. We just need um, sort of like leftover balls. I mean, I, I sort of went through a few different design ideas with these balls of yarn. And even this is going to be more than enough to knit at least one more of these. So you're going to need... Um, 35 yards of color A. Um, and so for me, that was sort of this mint color here. And then 22 yards each of your colors B and C. Um, and again, this is one of those things that's perfect for all those leftovers. Um, these balls of yarn um, for the dishcloth cotton, you know, depending on the brand, they usually have, you know, around 175, maybe up to 250 yards of yarn in them. Um, so really just think about how many dishcloths you could make. You could do them in different color combinations, use your leftovers, whatever. Um, Cause I don't know about, about you. I have made a lot of dishcloths over the years and I have a lot of these like little half balls of dishcloth cotton. Um, so once you have the yarn, then of course we're gonna need um, the needles. And for this, we're using a US size seven. And I just wanna talk a little bit about needle choice. So here I have some straight knitting needles, your traditional knitting needle. And um, I, I will say that for this smaller project, this is one of the few times where I might actually reach for just my regular standard knitting needles. Um, because you know, the dishcloth is not that wide. We could print more or less fit all the stitches on the needle. There'd be a little scrunching, but that's okay. Um, and um, in addition to that, I found that having the little bobbins of yarn we're going to be dealing with uh, worked pretty good with having the straight needle. Um, so this is an option for you, your regular old knitting needles, if you like. Um, I also have here, it's a slightly smaller one because my size seven was in another project, um, but a uh, 16 inch circular needle also 
will work as well. And that's what I'm just going to go ahead and use today. Um, and I like these because it does help hold the weight of those little bobbins hanging off of your project. Um, you know, they can kind of sit on the cord and it will take some of that weight. And so that's the yarn and the needles. And then just sort of the usual things, your scissors, your tapestry needle, and you may or may not decide you want a few locking stitch markers um, to help keep your place with certain things or to mark your right side. Um, but that's it. And so now I want to talk about um, making the little bobbins of yarn here. Um, and before I get started on that, I can see that people are uh, chiming in and letting us know where they are watching from. Uh, Michelle is watching from Langley, British Columbia, Canada. Um, and Michelle says that they can't wait to try this. I'm very excited, Michelle, that you're here because, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's just, it's going to be something really easy to try. And then even if you don't like it, you still have something you can use at the end of it. Um, and I do think that there is value in that. That's one thing, um, over the years I've really learned even in teaching classes in person, um, is that sometimes people walk out of class and it's not that they hated the class. It's just they've realized that that's not a technique they want to do. And that's OK, that it wasn't necessarily a waste of time. Now, you know, right, you're not going to try to knit a big like intarsia sweater, for example, if you don't like it. Um, but I actually, again, was pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoy doing this. So, OK, let's talk about making um, the little bobbins of yarn. Here I have a bowl where I've already just made some. Um, you can get actual bobbins um, that they make for you to wind yarn around. Um, so you can use those if you want. Um, you could also even use the little, I would recommend using the plastic versions of um, the little uh, bobbins for um, like embroidery floss. Um, you know, like DMC makes like just those like little white bobbins. Um, for this project, it might not really be the best type of bobbin to use because you are going to need kind of a lot of yarn and you could really only wind so much onto um, those tiny little like DMC style bobbins. Um, but that would be an option too. Um, or you could just make these little um, hand wound little tiny balls, which is what I did. So let's make one now. And so we have to make a we're going to have bobbins for each block of color. So let me just pull out the chart here and I'll hold it kind of up towards the camera. And obviously when you uh, download the pattern, you can then like on your, um, you know, mobile device or uh, tablet or whatever, you could zoom in. Um, so each block of color is going to need its own bobbins. So here we'll have one. We'll have one over here and here. That's color B, color C. But then here where we have the yellow here coming down into the blue, we'll need a bobbin here and a bobbin here. So we're gonna just talk about how to work all that in just a minute. Um, so you are, as you can see, you are gonna need at least, you're gonna need two bobbins for color B, one bobbin for color C, and ultimately you'll need two bobbins for color A because you can use just one, but then when you get up here, you're gonna separate and have one bobbin here, one bobbin for color C, one bobbin for color A again. So let's make these little hand wound balls. So what I like to do is just start with my yarn tail here. And depending on the size, I either hold just two fingers like this, or a lot of times I kind of do like this, like separate between these two fingers. And then I'm going to go in a figure eight around. So I just have my tail just going right over the top of my fingers. And then I start taking the yarn and just wind it around my fingers. Obviously, be careful to not do this too tight. Um, you can even separate your fingers a little bit to give yourself some space so you're not, you know, <laughs> cutting off the circulation to your fingers. Um, and then you're just going to wrap the yarn around until you're happy with the size of the ball. Um, I mean, you could do some math to figure out exactly how much you have in the little ball, but I don't ever really worry about that. So once you're happy with the yarn wrapped around, we're just gonna take our scissors here and I'm just gonna just cut the yarn off the main yarn ball and then kind of wait until there's like a little bit of a tail like this left. And there's a few different ways to do this. Oftentimes I'll just pinch it like this to take it off my fingers. So we have something that looks like that. And then I take that out, that outside tail, the one I just cut and wrap it around like this to secure it. 
And then right at the end, I'll just take the tail. Sometimes I'll even take my finger like this and kind of hold it over and then bring that tail through. And that'll just hold down sort of it looks like a little like a little bow, just like that. And now where I started, now I've made this tiny center pull ball of yarn. We actually have a free video for this on the Knitting Circle website if you want to check out uh, that as well. But um, I just made obviously all these little bobbins here. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be using. And then also for my demo, I am going to just do a slightly smaller version here. Um, I've just made up this chart, which, which is basically just cutting a bunch of stuff out of the larger chart, um, just so you can see a little bit more about changing the colors and stuff. Um, and so, um, you know, that way, um, you know, we can see a little bit more of these color changes up here versus making the big giant dishcloth. So let's get started on casting on and see uh, who else we have here dropping in the chat. Let's see, we have Joe from New York. Margaret says hello from Little Rock, Arkansas. Monique, good for you to try in Tarja, Jen. Yes, thank you. Um, and Michelle says small projects are good with new techniques. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, if you missed the last live, um, I did a coaster about duplicate stitch, which was something else like I've done a few times, but not something I do all the time. Um, so yeah, I love doing the little projects just to try, just to try things out. Okay, so we'll start by casting on, and our cast on here doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna do a long tail cast on because that's pretty much what I use for everything. So I'm gonna cast on 13 stitches. My slip knot counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Just double check that two, five, seven, 10, 13. Yep, and then I mean, I'm gonna just cut my tail a little bit because otherwise I know I'm gonna end up knitting with it. Um, okay, so our first side is a wrong side because um, I use the long tail cast on. So I treat that as a right side row. And so my next row is a wrong side row. So we're going to be doing a slip one with yarn in front for every uh, row, we're always gonna be starting, um, regardless of what color we're working, with that slip one with yarn in front. So front is facing us as we're knitting it. It does not refer to right side or wrong side. So slip one with yarn in front. So we have the yarn in front, we're slipping purl wise, and then we're bringing the yarn in between the needles to the back and knitting to the end. So that's pretty easy. This is us just getting established, um, established with our pattern. And here, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Okay. So we're just knitting that first wrong side row. Just like that. Okay, and then we have two more setup rows. Now we have a row one and two. With row one, we're gonna slip one with the yarn in front. Oops, slip one with the yarn in front, knit to the last two stitches, join color B, and then knit two with color B. So we're just gonna knit until there's two stitches left. And this is the part where I find it is, a, this is the fiddly part for me. It's the joining the new colors um, that I feel like gets a little bit fiddly sometimes. Okay, so my color B, I'm gonna use this gray and I already have my little um, bobbin made. So now sometimes when I'm joining a new color, I'll knit the two stitch, the old, um, the first color and the second color together as one stitch. Um, I didn't, I really wanted to have defined, um, like really defined colors with this. So I just simply take my end here and then we're just gonna basically make a loop like this. So here's like my yarn tail and that's my working yarn. And then we'll go into the stitch and just put that loop on. And this will be a little bit loose here um, just because we joined that new color. But as we go on, it'll tighten up and we can always tug on those tails slightly to tighten things up. So we knit two. Oh, I'm knitting with the tail. That's not going to be good, right? Okay, there we go. All right. So that takes care of row one. Now for row two. 
Okay. We're going to slip one with yarn in front, knit one. Now we're going to knit to the last two stitches in color A. So we're gonna bring the old yarn, which is our color B, in between the needles because this is the wrong side. Okay, we bring this to the front and then we bring the old color over the new color. So I consider old color the one we're finishing up with. New color is the one we're about to work with. So old color goes over, new color is going to the back because we're gonna knit to the last two stitches. Okay, and now we need to join a color B over here as well. So you can't just use your color B that's over here because this, this yarn's way over here. So we have to attach another color B over here. So I have another little bobbin here. We're gonna bring that old color in between the needles. So it's in the back. And then with this, I don't necessarily worry about my tail being on the right side of my work right now, because I can always bring it to the wrong side of my work later, just sort of slip it through two stitches. If you want to make sure your tail's on the wrong side from the beginning, we'll just lay our color B down here in the front, which is the wrong side. Now we'll just kind of pinch it to hold it in place there. And now knit those last two stitches. Just like that. Okay, so there we go. So at this point, things are a little bit, um, maybe a little tangly because only because we're, I just started picking up and didn't really worry too much about my yarn management on that first row. But going forward, we're going to start worrying about, uh, not worrying, but we're going to take notice of where our yarn is so that we can um, keep it organized and don't make a big twisty mess. Um, once again, when I was knitting the actual, actual dishcloth, first of all, I, to be honest, was kind of lazy and I started my dishcloth by um, just working, um, well, these two, because I only, for the most part, needed one of each until the very end of color A. I tried working straight off of the balls and then I worked off the ball of this one and made a second bobbin for this one. And I'll tell you what, it was a it was a terrible idea because these are very heavy and like the yarn wants to pull out of it. Um, and so I finally was like halfway through with my dishcloth and just off of the dishcloth itself made the little bit, little bobbin. So, um, you know, I've said it before, I tend to be the kind of knitter who's like, I wanna start this project right now. I don't wanna worry about like taking this extra step that's gonna make my life easier later, um, but just, learn learn from me um take the time to make the bobbins <laughs> okay so now here this is also in the um in the actual handout or the download as well um but here i there are some tips for knitting in tarja that we're now going to be keeping track of as we are um working so i'm just going to go ahead and read this because it might be hard for you to see on the piece of paper so while it may be more ends to weave in at the end of the project, it's much easier to work the intarsia patterns by making the small balls or bobbins. Again, I just talked about that. Okay, so when changing colors on the right side, we're bringing the old color over the new color. And then when we're turning from right side to wrong side, we're gonna be going clockwise. And then um, wrong side to right side, we're gonna turn our needle counterclockwise. So now let's look at how to do that. So at this point, rows one and two are done. And so I'm just gonna start following this chart. Let me get all my yarn out of the way here. Put the chart maybe over here in the corner. Okay, so now we're just starting at row three and we're following the chart. So we're knitting on both sides, um, which is noted in the pattern that you are gonna continue knitting on both sides. I did not on the wrong side put um, like the little dots like you would normally see in a pattern. I was trying to make it as easy to read as possible, but we are gonna be knitting on both right and wrong side. And we are going to be slipping one with yarn in front with the color indicated. So for example, up here um, where I have the yellow and then the slip one with yarn in front, we would do it with that, which would be our color C. Okay, so let's get this organized so we don't have any yarn tangles. 
So first of all, my yarn is a little bit long going to my bobbin. So I'm not gonna pull out a bunch more yarn right now because I don't really want the yarn to be this long ultimately while I'm knitting it. So I'm just gonna let it, let it be. So we're just gonna get this organized on this row. And then after this, it should be pretty easy. And that's not to say you're never gonna turn your knitting the wrong direction. Um, you know, things are gonna get tangled once in a while, but the beauty of these little bobbins is it can become very easy to get it untangled, especially once we've knit up some of these longer strands coming from the balls. Um, it'll be much easier. Okay, so here, you can see here. Now, here's my back. I have, okay, I have a ball of yarn here. That's this one over here. Then I have the mint that's going to here. Then I have my other color B, it's going to here. These are not tangled at all. So they're all just straight down to their, to their little individual balls, okay? So now we're ready to start working the chart here. So I'm going to, slip one with yarn in front, knit one, and now I'm switching over to my um, to my color A again. So again, we're gonna drop color A, no, that's color B. We're going to old color over new color. Remember, I define old color as the one I'm finished working with, new color is the one I'm about to start working with. So I'm dropping the old one and bringing the new one up to then knit. So we're gonna knit here, it looks like to the last two stitches. And then we have to switch to our color B again. So we're gonna drop old color, drop the old color, pick up the new color, old goes over new and we're going to knit two see we have donna saying hello from ontario canada we have a lot of canadians here today that's great okay and so we've knit two that finishes row three now here's this is the part where you kind of want to pay attention to what you're doing we were on the right side and let's even take a stitch marker and just mark it because even though this does have a definitive right side and wrong side and i can show you the dishcloth at the end um this might just help you a little bit to remind you which way to turn your needles so when you're on the right side going to the wrong side we're going to turn the needle away from us so it's going clockwise so see it's like a clock going this way to the wrong side I remembered this by just thinking right away. <laughs> I'm taking it away from me. So right away and turn it around. And now we'll just start following row four. So notice I have not moved these balls at all. And granted, once they get up higher on here, they would actually be hanging down. So we're gonna slip one with yarn in front, knit one. Now we're on the wrong side and we need to switch colors. So we're gonna bring the yarn in between the needles. I actually found even though I'm not gonna purl, sometimes if I just stuck my needle in purl wise here, just to get myself situated, that helped sometimes. So you can try that if that works for you. So see the old color now has come down, new color up. And I'm just following line four of the chart here. Okay, now we're at the last two stitches here. Again, we're gonna bring the yarn in between the needles. Again, if you want, you can just put your needle in pearlwise just to get yourself set up. I just, I don't know, I just started doing it and then I found it was actually kind of helped me a little bit. Okay, and then knit two. Okay, so that finishes round, or excuse me, not round, row two. So now when we're turning, now, from wrong side to right side, we want to turn our needle towards us. So it's gonna go counterclockwise this way. I didn't come up with a good mnemonic device for this. I just remembered right side was right away and then wrong side's just towards me. So if anybody uh, has a cute little mnemonic device for going counterclockwise or towards you um, on the wrong side, just drop it in the chat. So we're gonna go from wrong side, we're gonna go counterclockwise this way. And here, 
Now, when we pull it out, let's take a look. It's pretty good. Might have one little tangle here, but overall, not too bad. And it will only get easier again as these strands get shorter. Okay, so now let's work row five. So row five here, we're going to be introducing a third color, which is this is what it becomes a lot. Um, and you can decide, actually, let me pull in my dish class now. So, okay, this is one stitch here. So you could decide to, for these two rows, and it's the same on the larger chart, you could decide that you are going to sort of do a stranded technique for this one stitch here and just, you know, carry the yarn across over to here. Um, but that's going to show up on the back. So let's take a look at the back of this. So this was the back of my dishcloth here, which I think looks equally as cool. And so by working that one color separately, you don't have any sort of strand going across here. It's just nice and color blocked. Um, so that's a decision you have to make. And I am going to go ahead and um, introduce another bobbin and all of that on this row. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're on row five. So we're going to I'm gonna get a lot of bobbins going here. We're going to slip one with yarn in front. Knit two. And now we are going to, let's see here, we're going to knit three, one, two, and three. Now we're getting another color in here. And now, because now we're separating this with a new color, we need to get another bobbin of this one into the mix. Because again, on that big chart, you can see here on the big chart where this little point is starting. Look at how many, look at how many stitches you got in it. So um, again, you could just carry it over for this one and then join on the next row, um, but you'll be knitting in this color to this point, do your one stitch in color C and then go back to color A to over there. Okay, so we did our one, let's see, we got our one stitch here and then we need to grab our other bobbin. And now we're going to knit that until we have three stitches left. So one, two, and three. Drop the old color, pick up the new color, and continue following the chart. And now you can see, yes, do we have a little hole here? Yes, but that's also because we joined the yarn right there. So I'll use my little tail, if you are noticing a little hole like this where you've joined, you have this yarn tail here available to you. So when it's time to weave in your ends, you would just make sure that you are closing that little gap up if tugging on the yarn isn't doing it for you. Now we finished a right side row, so we're going to right away to get to the wrong side. You can see we just have all of these strands and it does look intimidating, right? This looks like your cat got into your knitting, but <laughs> it's really, it's really not that bad. I promise you the first few rows, you're like, what am I doing to myself? But after you've got those few rows done, it starts to become much, much easier. And it is, of course, it's like, like anything in knitting. It just takes practice, right? Um, everything in knitting takes practice. You know, I, um, you know, didn't learn to knit from knitting charts in a day. I, I didn't even learn how to do the purl stitch in a day, you know, so just keep that in mind that even if this is seeming a little fiddly to you, it's okay. It gets easier with time. We'll just finish this off row off here. We are finishing off our wrong side. So now we're on the wrong side, going to the right side. So we bring it towards us. And you can see these shorter ones that I have here. It's actually really easy because once they're really short, you can even just give your um, give your project uh, project a little shake, and things will just 
to completely straighten out. And so this is just a matter of the fact that some of these strands here are longer. This is not a matter of going in the right direction or wrong direction. This is just because some of my strands are hanging out and so things are kind of crossing weird. But again, this all gets better as we go. So let's keep going and let's do uh, row seven now. So, and then after row eight, we'll actually be done with our, um, we'll be done with the mint. Okay, so we're gonna slip one with yarn in front. Knit three, one, two, three. We're gonna drop, pick up the mint, and we're gonna drop and pick up the coral. Remembering not to pick up that yarn tail. I can't tell you how many, well, I do it on every project anyway. There we go. Gonna drop the coral, pick up, make sure we're picking up that right green there. One, and then drop, and then pick up our gray here and it to the end. And then again, after this row, it's gonna be very easy because we're gonna get rid of the mint in the mix. Right side to wrong side, away from you, and work row eight. One thing that is nice about this pattern is as you are working, the wrong side row is exactly the same as the right side row. Um, so you're just, if you, whatever color you're seeing on the wrong side row, that's the color you're knitting with. So for example, here, I'm to my coral stitches, I'm just gonna knit the coral stitches. And you'll notice this is not totally natural for me. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to even do this project today, because um, I wanted you to also see that like, you know, the knitting, knitting experts, most knitting experts don't know every single thing about knitting, right? Like think about anything, like even, you know, I have friends that are doctors and they joke, like my friend that's a cardiologist, her joke is like, if it's about the heart, I know exactly what it is, but you know, she's been out of medical school a long time now, you know? So if you have a problem with your foot, she can't help you, you know what I mean? And so um, it's the same way with knitting. So it's, you know, I do a lot of like lace and shawls. And so no, intarsia is not coming naturally to me, but it's just one of those things that now I'm gonna practice more. I challenge myself to try it. I'm challenging myself to teach you how to do it live. Um, and it's one of those things where I did sort of find a love of it again. And I did start thinking about all kinds of cool projects I could do with it as well. Okay, so we finished uh, row eight. Let's bring it towards us to bring it back to the right side. And let's take a pause now because we don't need that mint yarn anymore. So let's just find our mint yarns here. And we're gonna cut our little bobbin off of the mint and then cut our other bobbin off of the mint. And then you just leave a tail that's you know long enough to weave in at the end. And already you can see just with that, how much um, how much better everything became, be, became. So there we go. And let's just work a couple more rows of this just so we can really get down pat what we need to be doing here. And you can see now I'm just pulling on these little yarn tails just to tighten everything up and then this will become smooth sailing from, from here on out. All right, let's do row nine. And again, you would just have 39 stitches to start on your dishcloth. And then um, you would just follow the chart that's in the, um, in the download, which we did just drop the link again in the chat if you didn't get it already. So we're dropping our old color dropping our old color, picking up our new color. And then once again, dropping our old color, picking up our new color. There we go, right away. 
And now we're working that wrong side again. And again, we're just make, knitting the colors, whatever color the stitch is, that's the color we're knitting when we're on the wrong side. If you would like to see a really cool Untarja project, one of my friends recently crocheted uh, one of the coolest Intarsia projects I have ever seen. Um, she, her name is Allison, and she is Crafty is Cool um, on Instagram. And she crocheted in Intarsia the uh, living room of the House of the Golden Girls. So um, it's really amazing. So if you want to see like really what really awesome things you can do with Intarsia, I highly recommend going to check out Crafty is Cool on um, Instagram. Okay. Finish that wrong side row. Wrong side. We're going towards. And there we go. And you can see now I twisted it and nothing was twisted after, after I kind of got my needle out of that mess. We don't have any twist there. Let's just do two more rows to make sure we have this down and, uh, then we, uh, will be good to go. So again, Slip one with yarn in front. Old color over new color. Just follow that chart. Dropping old color, picking up new color. And we're on the right side, we're turning away or clockwise and then wrong side remembering to slip that yarn slip that stitch with the yarn in the front and then beyond that we're just knitting the stitches in whatever color they're they are on the uh, left needle and obviously that's not gonna be true for every um, intarsia pattern, um, it's just for this one. And then also one thing I wanted to say about this is that obviously you might get thinking that you can make a lot of cool stuff with this. And yes, that would be very true. Um, see previous comment about my friend Allison's Golden Girls Living Room Intarsia project. But um, with this, you have to keep in mind that, um, when you are knitting in, um, well, knitting in general, right? Um, and we talked about this in the last live event with the duplicate stitch, is that knitting stitches are not square. And so if you're trying to um, put in um, like some kind of specific design in Intarsia, you are gonna have to account for the fact that the stitches aren't square. This isn't like cross stitch or even like single crochet because um, single crochet stitches are pretty close to square. Um, so you are gonna have to account for that if you are gonna do any kind of design. Um, and there are programs that can help you with that. You could, um, normally I don't use knitters graph paper when I'm um, like charting out something um, like a lace pattern by hand because you know, it's lace, I've done enough of it, I kind of know how it's gonna look. Um, and the fact that my stitches aren't being exactly represented as the right size in lace, I mean, it is important, but not as important as when you're trying to maybe make an actual picture. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you can buy uh, knitter's graph paper online, you could get it at your local yarn store. Um, I have not looked for it at a big box craft store, um, but you may be able to get it there too um to draw out your picture so just keep that in mind because even if we look at our initial chart for the um for the dishcloth itself look how my chart is long is like much taller here but then look at my actual dishcloth it's actually wider than it is tall and so that was one thing i had to play around with too a lot when i was working on this project was trying to figure out the ratio that was gonna work. And I ended up kind of liking this ratio uh, versus adding additional rows because I did kind of like that it looked a little bit like an envelope. So um, anyway, that's just some tips to keep in mind as you go forth and decide to design your own projects. Um, so that is it. You would just continue on with the pattern like that um, until you were done. Of course, you would have to weave in all of those ends at the end 
Um, my suggestion for you when you're weaving in your ends at the end is first of all, take your time because there are gonna be a lot more ends than there usually is on a dishcloth. And also those ends to have the back look its best, I would recommend um, like for example, when you're weaving in your uh, color C up here, the coral, weave that end in to the coral part of your fabric and same with each one. So weave in those ends in the color block that's the same color so that your back, even though, you know, I mean, it's a dishcloth, who cares what the right side and wrong side is, right? Um, but that way your back does look nice versus like having your coral like coming over here somewhere into your gray or something like that. Um, but then you would just weave in your ends and that would be it. Um, and from there, you could just go forth and make a whole bunch of these. I think they would look cool. Um, even if you incorporated some of those like variegated um, or sometimes they have like the kind of stripey um, dishcloth cottons. Um, they have, uh, you know, the ones that um, kind of have that twist to them, especially like the holiday color. So there's, I think there's a lot of really cool things that you could do with this pattern just by changing up the yarn a little bit. Um, you know, you could even, for example, if all of this seemed like too much, like it's because especially once you get to in this section where you've got, you're going to end up having five ball, little bobbins in here. Well, um, if you just look at the chart, you could even think about the gray, the mint and the gray. So the colors A and B, you could do it all in one color. And so you would just work one color up to this point and then just, just do this little V, this little part here, this upside down triangle, just do that in the second color. Um, you know, you could do that too, just to get a little bit of practice. So hopefully I've encouraged you. And, you know, as you could see for me, it's not the most natural uh, knitting technique that I've done. This is not one that I could do in my sleep. Um, you know, so for me, uh, with this being National Craft Month, I think that this was a really great way to challenge myself. Um, it kind of reminded me that intarsia is really cool and that I want to do more of it. And so hopefully you just go ahead and give it a try too. Um, don't worry about it being fiddly. Just take a little time. Just if you can work on it somewhere, at least those first few rows somewhere where it's like quiet and you can actually like concentrate a little bit. Um, I do think it helps, especially on those first few rows, just until you sort of get into the rhythm of it. Um, you know, I just did this tiny little swatch here and had all these little bobbins. But again, with the larger dishcloth, once I kept going, um, you know, it does become a lot easier. Um, and then I just encourage you to go online, do some Google searches, just see what other types of intarsia projects people are making. Um, and think about how you can incorporate it into your into your own projects going forward. So I hope that you really enjoyed watching uh, this uh, live stream today. Um, I hope that you give it a try. If you do give this pattern a try, uh, be sure to tag us on social media. Like I always say, we wanna see what you're making. Um, we wanna see how you did with some of these projects we've done in these live videos. And in this case, with it being National Craft Month, we really want to encourage you to challenge yourself, try something new, um, even if it's outside your craft, within your craft, whatever it is, um, you know, we really, we really want to just be celebrating, uh, you know, crafting and specifically here at the Knitting Circle, of course, knitting, because that's the craft uh, we love the most here. Um, but I just really hope that you enjoy our National Craft Month. We have lots of great uh, content coming for you this month that I think you'll really enjoy. We've got some, some really great live events coming up. Um, and so that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again soon. Happy knitting.